Well, good morning, Texters. This morning you get a, another fun, fun little haul with a makeup-free treasure bag. Um, yes, missing that hour's sleep I didn't get this morning. Anyway, apart from my fringe doing crazy things and the badger stripe making a comeback, here I am to present to you um, some finds. I am deeply enjoying jumble sales because I've not really been doing them in a while. I kind of travelled further afield. Yes, it's taking time. But I'm finding that in terms of what I'm getting, the quality of what I'm picking up and certainly what I'm paying for it is, <clears throat> excuse my voice, is quite amazing. Um, I'll try and speak up a bit. I know some of you have had problems with sound and that's probably, whoops, wobbled it. As much to do with my lack of technological ability as it is to do with the fact that I've got a quiet, a quiet voice. Unless I'm shouting. So, everything I'm going to show you today is from one jumble sale, an afternoon jumble sale, and involved me travelling nearly an hour to get there. Apart from that, pretty cool. Um, my total spend, including the 50p admission price for everything you're going to see, which is uh, about 20 items, was £8.20. Obviously, I have to factor in the fact that I probably spent some petrol going over there, but I had a lovely drive through the Kentish countryside and East Sussex countryside, so Without further ado, I've got to show you what I picked up. Um, I kind of know what I paid for things, but when you pick up a massive, sorry, bouncing around, when you pick up a massive bundle of clothing and someone goes, ooh, uh, that'll be two pounds, and you're thinking, I've got 10 items here, you've charged me 20p an item. But I've never seen anything like it. I, I got there just over half an hour before it was due to start. The queue was quite long. There must have been about 30 people in front of me. Um, it, and when you walked in, I mean, I'm quite tall, but I swear the mountain of clothes on the trestle tables was nearly as tall as me. I thought you'd get some small person trying to filter out something from the bottom. They're going to just disappear under a mound of clothes. Um, but there you go. I found my height quite useful. I was able to reach over and sort of get things. It was quite frustrating and thankfully it did thin out a bit as time went on. Um, classic strategy for a... Uh, jumble sale is to go to the racks first and I have um, Andrea and other people to thank for that because that's where they tend to put stuff that is higher priced maybe a pound or two pounds an item but it's where you'll get the quality coats quality jackets and I have to show you the very first thing I picked up because I was a bit intimidated by those uh, walls of clothes this beautiful beautiful dressing gown it's not silk, um, I think it's rayon, but I love the colour. I mean, I, I'll keep this for myself. I think I look rather, rather, very Gatsby-ish in the matter of a morning. Um, I'm pretty sure it isn't silk, mind you, uh, with a lovely belt. It did actually, when I got home, realise that it had a the, the seam that sort of parted company with itself. Um, I've repaired it, obviously I'll declare it, but it's not somewhere terribly visible. And it's in pretty good condition, and, and I think... That was one that was two pounds, but I didn't mind. It got me started buying because you've got to start somewhere. But the next one, oh, you chatsters are going to love this. This is and smells like only a barber can. And instead of being a regular barber jacket, this is actually a huge, great trench coat really long and a beautiful dark blue with a flap at the back and it was two two pounds yeah two pounds uh -huh. um i think there are some fake barbers about but the, the labeling inside is, is pretty good there's nothing about this that says it's anything other than genuine so i couldn't believe my luck when i plucked that off the rail that went straight into my large ikea bag for two pounds. Um, now I don't know how much I get for the um, for the dressing gown. I'm I do well on that sort of thing sometimes, but I might keep it for myself. But that little number is probably going to get me. Let me see. I have actually done some drafts for these. They've not gone on yet. Um, I I could get up to 120 pounds for it. Um, uh, it's that sort of season where people want to get out and about, they've had enough of winter, and this is a perfectly 
So I'm really hoping uh, that that is makes just that on its own made my trip totally and utterly worthwhile. You don't find this sort of stuff every day. It was just the universe being kind to me, and I'm deeply grateful for that. So that was lovely. That was the sort of the big find. Then, of course, I'd done the rails, and it was time to muscle in on that mountain of clothing. So, <clears throat> here we go. Like I say, everything here, including that coat, all came in at £8.20, including the 50p admission. This I picked up because I quite like the style. It's sort of like a cotton knit with a two-layer effect, and I, I do have some luck with this label. It's Betty Jackson Black. Um, when I'm getting it home, no, no stains, but actually it has a few pulls in the fabric, so that may be one that I either keep or re-donate. But you know, when clothes are working out at probably 50p or 20p an item, I'm not really going to be too mad at that. Um, <laughs> I, I saw this in the distance and just had to have it. It's Mickey, a space Mickey from Shanghai Resort. I had no idea Mickey had been to Shanghai, but not only is this lovely, it's brand new with its tags. I think the Shanghai is a bit of a rarer thing than perhaps, you know, the Disney World's in Florida. Um, I've looked it up on comps and I'm peering over here because I've done the drafts. Where's it gone? Um, yeah, I could get anything up to £30 for that. Um, I'll stick it on high and I will bring it down. And, you know, I kind of like, you may as well aim high because there's nothing worse than that feeling of thinking you've undersold something when it sells. Um, so we have that. Um, this is a brand that isn't really very hot anymore. I think most people will know about Bench. It was in some while ago. It's kind of ubiquitous, but I liked the design of this. It's a quite a lightweight, camouflage, stripey. Um, it's a small men's, but it's just a nice jacket for better weather, really. It's not a winter one, so I thought for the silly money they were charging I would give it a try. I'm not usually bothered about bench but it would seem that even with something like that I am... Ooh, I am lost. I'm looking through. I could probably get you know 15 to 18 pounds on that. I do put postage on everything just in case you're wondering. So anything has PMP added on top. So next I'm a sucker for a bit of vintage wool. I can't wear it. it, it just drives me nuts. But I saw this, and it's it's basically a cardigan. It's nothing fancy, and it's in this sort of chestnut brown colour. But it had this lovely label. Um, there we go. Which I hadn't heard of before. Mayban, Maban, Made in Scotland. Anything wool and made in Scotland with a vintage feel does tend to have a following. Um, and I was looking to get, well I could get anything up to £40 on it, but we're sort of moving out of jumper season. What I tend to do with the big jumpers when we start coming out of winter is I actually put them, bag them up and put them down into my shed where they're safe and dry and people still buy them, but it means they're not taking up room in my stock room. And I'm quite happy to hang on to it for another time. Here we have Fat Face. I think it was um, Caroline from the Celtic Traders that said you can't put Fat Face into, is it Google or, or um, eBay because it doesn't like it. <laughs> so you have to put it as one word. I, I, I'll have to look into that because that's interesting. Maybe they think it's insulting in some way. Who knows? Anyway, these are just plain cargo pants. Chino style, they're not really cargo pants, they're chinos. Uh, they, Fat Face has a following, they're horribly expensive new, but these these were a 30 short, so it's not the best size. And I think they're men's, but you know, again, at those prices, I don't mind picking them up because I'm imagining that I'm probably going to shoot, for, I'll probably get about 13 pounds on them. So yeah, they do sell quite quickly. Not great money, but we all need those fast sellers, don't we, sometimes? Now, these are interesting. I don't for one moment think they're genuine, but at the 
20p price, I thought I'm going to pick them up and look into them, at least find out what they're trying to imitate. They are sort of long jeans, but they're in a very, very thin material. So it's not a denim, it's more like a just a cotton. They have that on the back. Oh, well, I don't know if you can see, it says Versace. It says Versace. And the logo, seriously? I mean, I maybe it's me, I've never seen a logo like that also seems to feature on the button. Um, I was just intrigued. They're actually quite nicely finished. So I'm thinking, well, I'd like to know more about them, what they're supposed to be. And I can't find anything on eBay or anywhere else. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare list them on eBay. I'm, God knows, I don't need that sort of thing. But they fascinated me just because they're so unusual. And if anyone knows what they're trying to imitate, or if they've ever seen that label on the back of jeans, which I can't find anywhere, or, or that, then I'd be very intrigued. I sort of bought them for research purposes, I think it's fair to say. Um, you have to be very careful with certain brands. Nobody wants a strike. Oh, God. <laughs> hilarious, hilarious small shorts. There we go. I'll show you the front, it might be better. There you go. Look, ripped up to the shreds. Yeah, that's very much a let's display our, almost all of our biology moment. That's a bit of a crotch to the wind, I think, approach to dressing. Um, they're brand new, but I, they're Boohoo, and I think there's, Boohoo has quite a following, certainly for anyone younger and slimmer than I. Um, but they'll still they'll fetch they'll fetch some money. People like the boohoo, so I may get something like uh, anywhere between sort of twelve to fifteen on those. And again for twenty p or whatever they cost me, it's got to be good. <clears throat> of course, festival is the key word there. Has to be festival. Now I do tend to grab anything that's Adidas. I like the colours on this. In fact, on closer inspection, I think it is probably a youth one rather than a ladies one, but I might pop it up for ladies because it will fit. Oh, that was my glasses gone. Because you heard that crash. It's the more modern Adidas label. It's not the old one, not the trefoil or the firebird. But, you know, these things are still expensive to buy. I thought I'd give it a shot. I also picked up some uh, Adidas track bottoms but my son is going to have those because he's growing at a stupidly fast rate. If you can hear the hoover in the background, that's my husband doing the hoovering. It's out. Right. <clears throat> now these were very interesting as well. I don't actually pick jeans up very often. I tend to be a Levi's kind of a girl. But these are super dry. And they looked very vintagey, so I thought they're a bit more on the norm. They're copper denim classics. Again, for silly money, why not? I know super dry is expensive new. I know it's been overdone here on eBay. I was fascinated because I thought if someone turned these away because they've got paint splattered down them. <laughs> In fact, on closer inspection, I think they're meant to be like that. So we live and learn, but they're a nice, they're a good size, they're a big size. And they are quality items, so I'm hoping to get, oh god I've buried my mouse <laughs> under a mound of clothes, what am I hoping to get for these? Oh, sorry, that sports jacket I was hoping to get, well, 15 to 18, I would imagine. Um, the, these, 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 where have they gone? Super dry, super soft. Ah, I've lost them now. I know I had them on here. Here we go. Um, I'm going to try for $34.99. <clears throat> so who knows? Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But the profit margins on these are just too good not to. <clears throat> Things I always pick up if I see them. Western boots, cowboy boots, particularly if they say something interesting like made in Mexico. Um, these are men's, um, 
for the UK eight. I would have thought they were nine, they look quite big. Oh, I have to do some measuring there. But they've got the leather sole. So they're not um they're not plastic, they're good, heavy, chunky, thick leather. And they they never go out of fashion though, they're just always there's always someone who's gonna want them. So quite hopeful with those because they're Mexican ones, I might get forty pounds on them. And considering I think I might have paid a pound for them. Yeah. Any day. Oh, these were so cute. Oops, I tried them all. I like them so much, they're my size. These are sort of goldy shoes. Oops. Really nice. Now I'm trying to decide whether one is actually comes up more gold than the other. If there's a fault with it. But maybe not. It's very hard to tell. It's sort of a new buck suede, but they've they've got this kind of slightly antiqued, goldy look to them. Very strange, very lovely. Something I'd never seen before. It's a brand I hadn't heard of called Unisa, U-N-I-S-A. And they were that much new. And these are new. 160 quid. I like them. I'm not sure why 160 quid like them. But they seem like a slightly mismatched pair, so uh, I don't know. One seems golder than the other. Look, maybe they're meant to be like that. More research needed. Um, if I put them up, I will declare that there there are differences between them and that they're a bit sort of quirky. Um, <clears throat> I think when I was researching them, they said they could go for. Oh, that's clever. Well, I thought I'd done them. Plainly not. <clears throat> so I wasn't sure how much I would put these up or whether I actually would. But you know, if they were 160 quid new, and I paid a pound, I know a size six. Yes. <clears throat> now, other things that I found, have I really gone through? I haven't got everything here, I'm sure of it. I'm sure there's some things I still haven't got here. Right. Um, it just doesn't seem like quite enough items. I've got more items that I've left somewhere. I wonder. Yeah, I reckon I've, put, I've got another bag somewhere, you know. I will go and get that. Here we go. This, this actually is a vintage but cropped tops are coming in again and this would have been from the 90s it is silk and it was Rebecca Sheldon at New Look um yeah don't know what I'd get for that really but there's got to be sort of 15 quid in it surely um, got a nice thing you've seen this <coughs> where's the other one Yeah, I wouldn't normally bother picking up a Marks and Spencer shirt, but this was brand new with tags. Um, it's autograph. It was very crisp. Um, and it's paisley and grey. I just thought that's really rather lovely. It's a good size too. It's a 16 collar. So that, and quite a good size there. I thought that was quite elegant, really. I could see my husband wearing that, but whether he would or not, I don't know. Now... I'm pretty sure there was more. Oh, <clears throat> anywho, Brickerback was uh, had been pillaged by the time I got over there. But I was drawn to this beauty. I love blue. <laughs> I was drawn to this blue vase, and then I saw that on the side of it. Oh, it's a bit sort of glary. Sort of looks like an M. I don't know who it is, but there's something about this that has such a lot of quality about it. It's got kind of like a clipped rim. Now, I don't know enough. I'm still trying to learn about ceramics and pottery, and I watch lots of videos on things. But there was something about that M that looked familiar, and I don't know where from, and I don't know why. So, if anyone out there knows, I'd be very grateful, but I just think it's the most beautiful thing. 
And if I see something that beautiful, I'm such a magpie, I, I do have to snap it up. Now, I'm pretty sure there were other things. Let me look at the list. The boots, the dressing gown, the jacket, the t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that was everything from there. I'm getting muddled with a few things I picked up from the flea market on the day before, <coughs> which was also some good finds. But that's really, I got all of that stuff for £8.20. Or, you know, and that includes 50p to get in. So, jumble sales may be hard to come by. They may mean travelling. But if you can find a sort of one in a really nice area where maybe there's a bit of money flowing around and people are just having a bit of a spring clean and... Things like the Scout ones, things like the WI ones are particularly good. Um, I do avoid the sort of nearly new mums to mums kind of, uh, no, it's nothing. I couldn't even get near the toys in this one. My son would give me a brief of, oh mum, please go and look and see if they've got Nerf guns. But there were loads of people just around this area <laughs> of uh, of the toys and there, was, there wasn't a prayer. I wasn't going to get close. I was too far back in the queue. And, you know... Mm. I'm, I'm not so big on toys, it's clothes that are my bread and butter, but it would have been nice to actually see what was there. Um, it was one of those places that actually had two levels, so they had books upstairs, and I did make my way upstairs and have a look at the books, but there was nothing. You know, I, 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 books, I like books, I have a house full of them, but in terms of knowing the valuable ones, it's a big area all in itself, and if you make that your speciality and you can scan things and... But I had hands full. There's only me at the jumble sale, so I've got like an IKEA bag over this arm. I've got an IKEA bag over this arm. I've got my handbag. I've got my phone in my pocket, and I am just, you know, <laughs> I I ran out of hands. So I hope you all had a good weekend. I hope the boot fairs, if you if they've started up yet in your area, are good. I hope if there's any um, jumble sales that you're enjoying them because they are a lot of fun, even if even if you have to get your little pointy elbows out. Um, I like the bit chatting to everybody before you go in. You meet some really sweet people. And I'm happy that I don't know what my return would be if I sold all of this lot at the price I'd like to get it for, but it's worth an afternoon out in anybody's book. So I hope you guys have a lovely time and uh, that you're all looking forward to Easter and having your kids at home. That was my main reason for going out and getting a massive load of stock because I thought I'll have it here I can be at home and I can list, but I can still sort of be about for my son because I can't just go sailing off and <laughs> leave him in the lurch. So I kind of stock up because I know I'm not going to be um, so available. And actually on Easter weekend, I'm making a bit of a bit of a trip to Glastonbury with some, some kind of witchy friends and uh, we're going to live at large in Glastonbury for a couple of nights. So that's my sort of holiday, which I'm looking forward to just, just for two nights. And then it's kind of back into back into it all for next week. So take care, Tasters. Have a good one. And thank you for watching. Subscribe. Oh, you know the stuff, don't you? Anyway, I hope you all have a very, very good week. Bye.